Hey everybody, for those of you that don't know, my name's Hoopy, and today we are working on a General 1000 Sport. And this here's the new Polaris General that I just bought for my daughter. Um, she's had a Razor 170 in the past, she's had a Honda 50 dirt bike, Polaris 90 four wheelers, she's had all kinds of stuff, and um, well, she needed something that she could actually ride with us. If we go to Hatfield McCoy's and stuff like that, we went and looked at a Razor Trail S and stuff like that. She sat in them, and uh, she's drove my Pro before, but she doesn't care for them. She can't really see over the dash real well and stuff. They had a General sitting there. She hopped up in it, and lo and behold, she liked it better. So I brought home a General for her. So what we're going to be doing is fixing this thing up because I bought a base model. I hate buying factory accessories. It, it's just not worth it. So I've got some stuff we're going to make and some stuff I bought, and we're going to fix this thing up a little bit for her. And the very first thing we're going to do is be adding the windshield to this. I ordered this one off of eBay. Uh, I don't know, 200 bucks or something, I think. The windshield I ordered is a uh, tip-out windshield. This way if it's hot, you know, you can flip it up and let some air get under the thing. So this windshield I ordered is identical to the one on superatv.com at like half the price um the instructions come and look very similar and everything it wants you to remove the roof remove the sound bar and remove this visor right here um i don't have a roof don't have a sound bar but if you turn to the next page it says the only reason it wants you to remove the visor is to drill holes in it and then reinstall it and it says that these holes are already pre-marked and they are I'm not taking it off just to drill those holes. I'm going to drill those holes out right there where they're at. Next thing they're wanting me to do is install some junk on this windshield. I'm going to go ahead and start on that. It says right in directions, don't use power tools. But uh, that doesn't work too well with me. I didn't buy them not to use them. Well, we've already got an issue with this kit. And that being... The hinges, um, they're not in here. Should have uh, took this kit here and looked at it first. I've got, they gave me four of those instead of a set of hinges. I'll show you everything I've got left here in the box. And I've got two more of those and no hinges. So we have an issue. So I just had to message the seller on eBay. Here's the windshield that I, I did order though, $236. And I compared it to the one on Super ATV and it's identical. And the one on Super ATV was 400. So, however, um, the hinges are missing in this one. So hopefully they'll send those to me and I can get moving on this. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm at a standstill until I get hinges, so I'm going to put the windshield to the side and we're going to move on to doing something else to this thing. So I think the next thing I'm going to start working on is installing her stereo. So I got her a four channel amp and I got some speaker pods and right now I've only got two speakers, but I got some marine speakers here. Um, the speaker pods are made to mount up underneath the dash here, which is perfect. Uh, they'll be out of the way and then later on i'll add two more and i'll probably put them up here on the roof that i'm going to make for this uh first thing i need to do is i'm going to go ahead and pull this hood off i need to see how hard it is to get underneath this dash or at least behind this panel so that i can put the amp in here somewhere safe um underneath the hood of this thing already has a bus bar uh i've got the plug-ins that i can literally hook stuff to it plug it in and it's already ready to go ran powered and everything um ground and power everything's good to go there but i want to put i don't want to leave the amp out here because this does get wet whenever you spray it off and stuff like that i would much rather have it up underneath the dash here where it's safer so i don't know if i'm gonna have any good luck finding anywhere underneath here to mount this but i wanted to show you what uh what to do here so it's pretty simple i just took a screwdriver and if you very gently come right here to the corner of your switch panel well, 
Maybe I can get in there a little better. If you just very gently come to the corner of your switch panel and just start that off, just enough to get your fingers in there. And then just gently pull across. The whole thing will pop off here. When that does that, the center box pulls out. Now, you can see what's down in there. There ain't much. There's a little grommet that goes through to the other side to run the wires through. Uh, there is a bar back here, and the bar does have holes in it. So I could probably mount that amp in here somewhere. And we'll probably be pretty safe on that. So that's, that's what I'm going to shoot for. I've also got a few other switches that I've got to cut the notches out for. So now's the time to do that with this. One thing that I found odd plugged into this uh, blank switch cover here was this wire and on it it says winch this bike doesn't have a winch but i'm assuming that polaris pre-wired it so they probably make a plug and play winch system to put on this i plan on putting a winch on this later and it's not going to be a factory polaris when i can promise you that so on this side over here to put this speaker pod in it's kind of hard for me to get my big head under here by myself I'll try to show you how this works. These were uh, 30 bucks on eBay, and they are actually made for the, the bike. But, uh, so this one here, let's see here, it just pops right up into there, and that's where it sits. Right there underneath the glove box. Speaker goes in here, and it's just got holes in it. I got a drill, and it's got those push tabs. It's got push tabs just like this that pop in there and hold it in. So that's where those are going. This one's going here, and the other one will go over there. I'm going to get in here and drill this. Like I said, I can't really record. There's not no room down in here. And I'll show you what they look like whenever I get them done. I went ahead and got this speaker pod mounted, and I drilled me a couple pilot holes in here for my screws. I'm going to uh, reach up underneath the dash here and drop a wire down in, pull it down, and get it ready. I'm going to go ahead and crimp my ends on it, and then we're going to mount the speaker real quick. So I just simply ran my wire up through the hole here and across this bar that's back in there. And over in the corner, I could feel that there was another bar that runs this way. And I just dropped the wire over that and it goes right down into the corner. And uh, let's see here. I'll try to get you into view. See it up in there and it just drops right down along the edge, comes into the back of that speaker pod. And there's my two ends sticking out. So I can hook the speaker up to that, put the screws in, and that's all taken care of. And then the only thing I gotta do is clip these wires off and hook them up to the pre-wired pre ends that go onto the amp. So this side here is pretty much done. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, show you what it looks like. And like that, here we go. Speaker number one is in there and mounted. It's up out of the way, he ain't gonna kick it. It's uh, pretty good, I like it there. All right, now to move on to that side. And I went ahead and I got the driver's side speaker pod mounted in here. This one was way easier. As you can see, there's a lot more room to work. The glove box isn't in the way and everything like that. Um, this side here took five minutes. Slapped it up there, drilled the holes, done. Put your push pins in. All right, I'm going to go ahead, put my wire ends on my wires, fish them down around there, get them in, and throw that speaker in there real quick. And like that right there. The driver's side is in. There's the driver's side. There you can see the passenger side. Um, I don't know if we can see this from up here. Yeah, there you go. They're in there pretty level. Um, the glove box covers this one up a little bit more, but yeah. So let's get the amp installed and see if this thing works. So I've got a tiny dilemma. And that being, I'm, ran, I'm going to run the power from this bus bar over to a switch to turn on the radio on and off. Um, so this bus bar has got a three-wire three, three wire bus bar on it. Ground, key switch power, and straight power. Uh, the key switch power only runs off of a small wire, though. Um, it doesn't, there's not like a relay or something inside this, I don't believe. If there was a relay here, then I would go ahead and just run the radio off the switch, off the key switch power, so I know I'm good. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run a relay in here myself so that 
the radios. I don't know if I want to leave it to where you have to turn the switch on, you can leave the key off and run the radio because if she forgets to turn it off, then the battery's going to be dead on this thing. But then again, if she's got to have the key on the entire time to run the radio, stop sitting somewhere or something, perhaps, um, she'll probably leave the headlights on and run the battery dead that away. So I've got to think on this for a minute, and I'll let you know what I decide. So I made up my choice. I'm going to go ahead and run it straight power to the switch and just hope that I can pound it into her head that she needs to turn that switch off when she's done. And she doesn't leave it on and run the battery dead. So that's what I'm going to shoot for. If she does happen to do that, then I can wire in a relay later. Um, and we'll go from there. Because the key switch power in this literally comes off of like a 10 amp wire. So it wouldn't support to run the radio and possibly later on a light bar. Um, because I'm going to rig the light bar up for sure it's going to have a relay in it to where it will only come on when the key is on. So the bike would have to be running to run the light bar. So this right here is the nifty little power switch I got her to uh, turn the radio on. It says rock on. And normally on these, this here is your power in from your battery. And this, let me think here. This one's power from the battery. This one goes to the accessory. Both these are ground. And this one here goes to, uh, you could run your key switch power because it turns on the lights. I'm running this one a little bit different because I only want the switch to light up when it's turned on because I don't want her to forget it. So I'm going to do this one a little bit different. My power is coming in here, but then I'm going to jump from the one that goes to the radio over to the one that runs the light. So only this switch lights up when it's on. Um, normally, if you run these uh, power accessory and then you run this one from your key switch power, when you turn on your key, the bottom one lights up. When you turn on the switch, then the top part lights up as well. Uh, this one here, nothing's going to light up when it's off, and the whole thing will light up when the switch is on. So I've done that on a couple different bikes for rock lights and stuff like that. This is how I'm going to run this one. So on the amp, um, because of the way I'm running it, I'm just going to tie my power wire and my remote wire into the same, crimp them together. And this way, whenever I turn the switch on, it sends power to both of these, which will be completely fine. Um, normally you would run like this to the 12 volt power and then this one here coming from your switch, telling it to turn on. Well, I want them to do, do it together. So I'm gonna run them simultaneously like this. So when you hit the switch, they get power and come on at the same time. All right, we got everything in place. We're ready to test it and see if the fire flies or not. So, plugging her in. Nothing's getting hot. I don't see any smoke rolling yet. So that's a that's a plus. Um, all right. As you can see, switch off will not lit up. Switch on, everything's lit up. I can see red lights flashing down in there on the amp where I put it. So uh, that's telling me that it's on. Let's uh, turn on a song here, see if we can connect to it. Song. Turn up the volume. Seems to work so far. So, uh, yeah, that part's done. Let's put this all back together. All right, it's the next day. Last night I finished up the radio, got everything tidied back up here. And today we're going to start on making a roof. And I'm going to build my roof. I got some pretty neat stuff to do it out of. I've done a couple of them like this. And it's, uh, it turns out pretty good. This here is a piece of sign material. Um, they come in four by eight sheets. There's the other half of it right there. And they're used to uh, put vinyl over and make uh, signs. Just like that big one we got hanging above the garage door right there. These ones here are used 
um, company got rebranded and they got new signs and the old ones were third away. So I asked if I could have a couple of them and I got some. But basically what this stuff is, is it's two pieces of aluminum, one on each side with corrugated plastic. That's plastic in between them. And uh, actually I've made windshield frames out of this stuff. I've made roofs and it works really well. Um, it's pretty solid, sturdy. It uh, bolts down easy, it's easy to drill through. And if like you've got to put a bend in it, you simply score one edge of it and you can bend it apart or bend it together because the plastic will, will uh, form. You might have to cut like a groove, like you'd cut like one section of that out to bend it together. And then the other side stays solid. So it works really well. It took me a few minutes, but I went ahead and got the decal stripped off the one side of this sign. The other side's brand new. This is a thin layer, a protective layer. So this side's good. Um, after I get this thing fitted up here, I plan on painting this side like black and we'll put it down on the other side. I think I want to do like a gray to match the bike and we'll put it up. Um, now we need to mark and see where we're going to put the bend in it and I want to get it cut because the back part of this goes down and probably take one or two ribs, one or two of the ribs out of this thing to get it to bend down that far. Good. The trick to this is going to be to only cut through one layer and not through to the next. So a circular saw would be ideal. But this is aluminum. I don't know. I put the blade on backwards. That'd probably do it. Uh, I need to get a straight line across here. That's going to be my next task. So considering I know I'm not going to need all of this, I'm just going to take this saw and just very gently touch the back part of this and make sure this is going to work. Perfect. Okay. Now I need to set my depth. Alright, let's uh... See what happens here. I'm not gonna say it was a great job. It was very loud, but it, it, it worked. If I can tell you now, that's not gonna be enough. So what I'm probably gonna do is move over a uh, notch and do another pass and take the whole middle of that out and that ought to let me have enough bend. So by cutting two strips of aluminum it took the aluminum piece off this metal corrugated plastic. I'm just going to take my knife and reach down in there and I'm going to trim that out the whole way and that'll leave me a nice I don't know probably quarter inch or so maybe a little bit more gap and that ought to let me fold it enough and if it's not I'll come back and take the next one. And there we go, like that. All right, the question is, did I cut enough to make that fold down here? I do believe it looks like it should be. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and drill my two holes out and stick bolts in them. This way, whenever I bend this, it's not flipping that up and I'm not trying to hold it and do all kinds of other stuff. So I'll go ahead and drill those holes real quick, get that bolted and then we'll go back to bending this. Front of this bolted down, now we can pull on this. And see what we got here. And I think that'll work just fine. We'll, uh, we'll take our marker while we've got it right here. We're going to mark around the front, see where we need to cut. And then we'll mark the back where we want to trim it off. And we're going to cut this. So I just want to show you all my lines here. This here's the one I've already cut. I had to redraw this one. Because me holding it up on the back of there, somehow that was like almost an inch out of whack over there. 
And if you look straight down this seam, this one here was straight the whole way, measured square. So I measured off this one to my mark here, and we went ahead and did the same over there and added that in to keep everything squared up here. So I'm gonna cut along that line. Then on my fronts, um, yeah, it's gonna follow the contour of that front visor, both sides. So it ought to look pretty good. I'm gonna get these cut off and we'll go from there. brake cleaner and wipe it all off get all these metal shavings there was some uh, residual glue stuff to it from peeling that decal we'll get it all off here and then we'll go ahead and paint this side black we'll be done with this side it'll be ready to go you were all that aluminum stuck to the remaining glue on here where i was peeling that decal that's what i'm going to spray and clean off like i said last but not least we're going to have some lacquer thinner here I dried and I went ahead and flipped this over. I'm not going to make you guys watch me do this. I'm going to peel this blue stuff off here. I'm going to paint this real quick and let it dry. I got to go get some U-bolts so I can bolt the back of this down. And uh, I'll show you whenever I'm reinstalling it. Well, I got the roof all painted. Uh, I called my daughter and asked her what color she wanted. She said flat black. So that's what color we went with. Um, we're going to go ahead and bolt her up on there and see what she looks like. All right, here in a minute, I'll take grinder and cut off wheel and buzz those bolts off. I just did one U-bolt right in the middle. Um, it ought to do pretty good. It shouldn't be too noticeable. I mean, yeah, you can see it, but it's not like it sticks out like a sore thumb once I cut it off. I'll touch it up with a little bit of flat black spray paint right there, and it's all hidden. Um, the back of this roll cage, right here at the very end, gets wider than it does at the front and everything. Uh, both sides have this little gap in them. This side is a little bit smaller because I got it a little off-centered. But all in all, everything on this turned out pretty good. Um, there's how it flows on the side. The front, everything trimmed out really nice. It all looks really good and uniform. The front looks awesome. Standing here in the front, you uh, look, that roof looks really good on there. So... That part there, uh, for what it is, and for what I've got in it, the price of that U-bolt right there was about $4. Um, and some spray paint I had laying around to clean that sign up to make it look like that. That's a pretty good roof right there. So, cheapest one I could find to buy was 200 bucks. And it was just a plastic roof, nothing special. So, I think that there looks pretty good. So next up on the list, we're gonna be adding a horn to this. Um, Horns, in my opinion, are great things, especially if you're riding in groups. Mainly because the person in front may not always be watching behind them, keeping an eye. Somebody behind you might run off the trail or get stuck, and the person in front of you can keep going. You got a horn, you can get their attention at least. So, definitely want a horn on here. Um, probably just gonna do it real simple. Mount it like right in here somewhere, so it's underneath the hood, out of the way. Uh, normally on the razors and stuff, some of them I have to put it down underneath. So this one here, I think I've got enough space and I can just literally mount it right in here and uh, that'll take care of this. Real simple to run the wiring for the switch and everything. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll get this figured out here. And these horns that I got, they're just uh, old horns off of Junk Ford Ranger. I just went and took them off of it real quick. As far as putting the switch in here to cut these out, I have cut these out every way you can imagine. I've used a Dremel tool, I've drilled a hole and, and Dremeled them all the way out. I've used the die grinder. I have used a jigsaw and a razor even and got the whole jigsaw up there to cut them out. The best way I found. The best hassle way free I found is I have a 
hot knife that takes Zacto knife blades. This is a hobby knife. And you just plug this thing in, you let it get hot, and I can stick it straight through there and go right down around and cut these out and just keep testing the switch till I get it trimmed up enough. And it's nice, clean, and easy, and nothing to worry about. Like, you don't have a spinning blade cutting all kinds of stuff. It's literally whatever you're touching with this knife. So I'll get this cut out, and then I'll show you what I got. And like that there, there's the square hole cut out. Switch fits in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all wired up, pop her in there, and be done. And like that right there, the horn's mounted. Uh, downside to a horn, the body of a horn is the ground. So unless you mount it to metal, um, you have to run a ground wire. So I mounted this one to the plastic. All I did was take a little eyelet and put it back here in between the bolt where I bolted it and bolted it in tight and hooked it to my ground. So the horn's grounded. So. We go in here. Key on, you can see the bottom one lights up, horn works, nice and loud, we're good to go. hinges and stuff like that we're done putting accessories on it so that's it for right now it's been a few days since we've been on this thing and i got my uh ebay hinges here so we're ready to finish this windshield up all right back where we left off was uh on the hinges it uh wants me to go ahead and bolt these on here now how in the hell is that gonna work so next up it wants us to bolt it on the bike so there we go well, got it on there. Uh, there's still some more steps to put the thing in here that holds it down and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, oh, it's in there. These next couple steps are going to be the hardest ones and not physically hard as much as it is. Uh, in fact, you got to drill holes and stuff. You gotta take these two clips and snap them onto this handle so they're in place. Where they go whenever the windshield's shut. It wants me to put a piece of tape across the dash and pull that down and mark it as to where I need to drill the holes. So, next up, after I mark those holes and stuff, I gotta go inside and pull the console out. And it's got this metal bracket and it wants me to attach it to the bar right where I put my amp. So I'm gonna have to move the amp over. And, uh... Basically drill the holes in the dash and bolt those things to this bracket. And um, that's that's it then. We're That's the end of the directions. So uh, let's get the inside tour part and stick her in there. So I thought I was recording all that. I went ahead and got this all bolted down. I even bolted these down. But if you can tell, I screwed up because I forgot to pull the tape off. So I got to undo those, pull the tape off, and then re-bolt those down. All right, we got everything bolted back down and uh, put back together here. So I'd see a moment of truth. Let me make sure there ain't nothing in the way. You reach out here, you grab a hold of this, and you can pull it back and snap it here. Um, and that'll leave it cracked so you get just a little bit of air. Or I may not be able to do this one-handed. This thing's got some serious shocks on it. My daughter will definitely not be able to do this by herself. Because <clears throat> I can tell you now, I don't think I can. Holy crap. I can get it to that position. I don't know how you're supposed to get it to snap. Wow, I guess that's gonna need worked in. That's uh, that's really tough. Probably just gonna leave it in the cracked position anyhow. It's summertime, 
she gets cold, I'll go out on the outside and push it and have her latch it down. Wow, that's ridiculous. Well, there we have it. There's fixing the windshield and putting it all in, and uh, we did the stereo, and I've made a custom roof for this thing. So uh, until later on, whenever she decides she needs something else, or I go to build a front bumper for this, that's all the accessories she's getting. So you guys like videos like this, go check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching.